So welcome everybody to our final reflection for Thy Kingdom Come 2021 as we celebrate Pentecost ecumenically today uh, with uh, our speakers, uh, Kathy Pope from the Roman Catholic Church and the Reverend Malcolm Bowers, her husband from the Church of England. So over to you, Kathy and Malcolm. Thank you, Roger. Um, and it's, it's lovely to be here. It's um, always very special when Christians from different traditions um, share together and, and bring their gifts. So, um, you know, we really are very glad to, oh, to be here. Yes. Yeah, yeah, we're not muted. No, it's, all it's all right. We're just discussing whether we're, we're muted, muted or not, but I think hopefully you can hear us. <laughs> okay. So, um, as Roger said, um, we are from um, different Christian traditions. So, for us, the spirit of Pentecost is the spirit of unity. And uh, for 37 years, um, Malcolm and I have been um, married to each other and we've been celebrating and growing unity in our interchurch marriage. Um, as you might guess, uh, Malcolm is a priest in the, in the Church of England um, and I'm Roman Catholic. So for us, unity isn't something that we do, it's rather a way of life. And that unity is, is not a uniformity either. It's a unity in diversity, um, and that's very important to us. Um, and that's a, a calling that we try to live every single day and infuses every aspect of our family life. So in an interchurch marriage, there's no blueprint as such. Each partner is faithful to their own tradition whilst also being invited to share in the others, um, which is very precious. And this gift of two traditions has been for us a great blessing. We've been constantly enriched by each other, often surprised and sometimes challenged, and raising our son to belong equally to both church families has been a great joy for us as well as him and his faith experience has been enhanced and deepened as a result. And so if we begin by praying the thy kingdom come prayer. So if you have that and would like to join in, that would be lovely. And we thank God for the Holy Spirit who inspires and unites. Almighty God, your ascended Son has sent us into the world to preach the good news of your kingdom. Inspire us with your spirit and fill our hearts with the fire of your love that all who hear your word may be drawn to you through Jesus Christ. Amen. Uh, the hymn we're now going to have reflects really what the psalm, uh, part of Psalm 104, we're going to say together afterwards. <clears throat> is should, if you've got the sheets for thy kingdom, your kingdom come, it should be on it for the day. Um, so it's for the beauty of the earth. And of course, with the climate uh, conference later in the year and, and the G7 coming up at, uh, uh, at Carpus Bay, I think it's very appropriate. Our birth over and around us lies 
tree and flower, sun and moon and stars of light, Lord of all, to thee. joy of ear and eye, for the heart and mind's delight, for the mystic harmony, linking sense to sound and sight. Lord of all, to thee we raise this our hymn of grateful So following that, that lovely hymn, um, we invite you to join in with verses one to four of Psalm 104. Praise the Lord, Lord my, my soul. soul. Lord, Lord my God, God you are, are very great. great. You are God clothed God with the splendor and majesty. majesty. The Lord wraps himself in the heart of the as with a garment. He stretches out the heavens like a head and lays the beams of the upper chambers on their waters. He makes the sand his and rides on the wings of the wind. He makes wind his best messenger. Flames of fire his servants. Our lesson is um, from the Luke, St. Luke's Gospel, chapter 17. It's about as short as you're going to get, because it's only two verses, 20 and 21. And this is about the coming of the kingdom. Once Jesus was asked by the Pharisees when the kingdom of God was coming, and he answered, the kingdom of God is not coming with things that can be observed. Nor will they say, look, here it is, or there it is. For in fact, the kingdom of God is among you. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Now that was a very short passage of scripture. So I asked Cathy to read it rather slowly so we could just let the words sink in. And the context of these words, of course, is God's kingdom coming. And many Jews at the time of our Lord were waiting for this and especially with the coming of John the Baptist, they thought it might be imminent. There are very idea, varied ideas of this kingdom would be like and what sort of Messiah will come? So it's natural for the Jewish leaders to ask the question in verse 20. Elsewhere, in what we call apocalyptic readings like Revelation and in the Gospels, there are many signs of the parousia, the end times, coming with great signs, but not here in Luke. 
Jesus says the kingdom is not coming with these signs, but is amongst you. Some translations say within you, but most scholars think amongst you is the right translation because the you in the Greek is plural. Jesus says the kingdom is here amongst them because he is there. Wherever Jesus is, there is the kingdom. The signs, however, are not what they might be looking for. Poor John the Baptist in prison must have been terrible for him, a man who was out in the open. Ask that genuine question. Are you the one or do we look for another? Jesus answered, Jesus answer is the one the Pharisees and others would have seen. The dead hear, the lame walk, the <coughs> deaf hear, the lame walk, the dead are raised and the poor have the gospel preached to them. One of my favourite prefaces is the Eucharistic prayer uh, for the feast of Christ the King. As King, that is Christ, he claims dominion over all your creatures, that he may bring before your infinite majesty a kingdom of truth and life, a kingdom of holiness and grace, a kingdom of justice, love and peace. The kingdom which came to us as the word made flesh is the kingdom amongst us, or should be amongst us as his body, the church. We should be showing forth truth and life, holiness and grace, justice, love and peace. God's kingdom, however, is not restricted to the church or is his spirit, although we should be the examples of what it should be. We probably think there are not many signs of the kingdom in the world today. At the moment, the conflict in the Holy Land must make God weak and we thank God there is at least a ceasefire, but not really of justice or peace. People who profess belief in him kill, killing each other. I know this is not all about religion, but land. Each side has a history and it is hard for us to fully understand what they're going through and how they feel. Here justice for both sides must be seen to be done and may, see, may seem impossible for us, but all things are possible with, for God. Pray for those trying to bring peace and justice for all in the Holy Land and throughout the world. Now, what I've said so far may seem so depressing, mightn't it? but I believe we have seen God's kingdom in the past year or so during the pandemic. Many people have put their own lives on the line to try and bring healing to those suffering from COVID-19. Some have often, even some have even died when exercising this ministry, especially those working in hospitals. GPs, community workers, carers, those in residential and nursing homes and many others, including those in the voluntary sector, such as those working in food banks. Surely God is working through these people to care for those in need. God's kingdom is in the midst of us, if only we care to look for it. So we thank God for these signs of his kingdom and as Christians, we commit ourselves to work for the full realisation of it in our society and in our world. A kingdom of truth and life. A kingdom of holiness and grace. A kingdom of justice, mercy and peace. Amen.
So we're coming towards the end of our sharing today. And um, before we have the blessing, I'd like to read a prayer. It's taken from, I don't know whether you can see, it's a, it's a book called Praying for the Earth, a prayer book for peace um, by John Philip Newell. And uh, it was something I bought uh, a few years ago when we were on the island of Iona. So um, apart from having some lovely prayers, it's also um, bound up, the meaning is bound up for us in that experience of, of pilgrimage as well. So let us pray. Glory be to you, great creating spirit, who shines in the distant stars beyond numbering, and on earth, peace. Glory be to you, great creating spirit, who sings and wings in birds on high, and on earth, peace. Glory be to you, great creating spirit, whose thunder shakes the shining firmament, and on earth, peace. Glory glory, glory, and on earth, peace. Amen. The spirit of truth lead you into all truth, give you grace to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, and strengthen you to proclaim the word and works of God. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and all you love and pray for this day and always. Amen. Amen. It's been very special yeah. Um, yeah. sharing today and, and all the, um, all the Thy Kingdom Come um, services have been, have been very precious. We have, um, looked at most of them, I think, um, during the week, even if we haven't been able to join in uh, at 12 o'clock. So thank you so thank much you. Yeah. Um, you. for sharing today and for anyone who, who shares on Facebook um, during the coming days. Um, it's, it really has been a, a very lovely experience. Thank you. Thank you.